chapter 1. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be partake, be thou part, verse 8. I didn't tell you that, did I? You don't have it memorized? Let's try that again. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Yes. Hold it. Stop right there. That word scares us. Afflictions. Mm -hmm. right. You. Mm. Be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Yes. Who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Yes. 
but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death, mm -hmm. hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, whereunto I am appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. Amen. Let's jump back to verse 9, our focus verse this morning, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works. Let me yeah. change that. Amen. Yeah. Not according to our abilities. Yes. <laughs> Too many times you want to fulfill God's calling within the guidelines of our own abilities. Right. But in order to fulfill God's calling, we have to step outside of our abilities. Amen. And we must lean according to His own purpose Amen. and grace. Amen. Okay, you may be seated. When we work within our own abilities, we are working within our own grace and our own purpose. Right. <coughs> oh, let me say that again. When we work according to our abilities... We do it within our own grace Amen. and within our own purpose. Why? Because we never want to venture out into God's grace right. and God's purpose. Why? Because it goes beyond our abilities. Right. Uh -huh. So as long as we, we, we stay within our abilities, we miss out. We miss out on what God has. Right. Amen. Even though God has given us, many of us, great abilities, He is saying, I need you to go beyond your great abilities and lean on my abilities. Right. Amen. 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 Where I like this, He doesn't change the thought process. When he talks about Jesus abolishing death. Right. What he is saying there is, hold on. The only thing that limits God's abilities is my death. But that's not a problem. God's abolished death. Death is, is the worst that could happen. But also the best at the same time. Right. <laughs> But when we do things within our own abilities and within our own works, then there's a lot of roadblocks. Uh-huh. That's right. Amen. There's jobs. Right. There's scrunch schedules. There's flat tires. There's a mountain of things, or there's molehill of things that we turn into mountains. Right. Oh, we're so good at that. Uh -huh. Amen. 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 Nehemiah 4 and 6 says, So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. And I added in, outside of their abilities. Mm -hmm. Because their abilities, left, their abilities left the walls in crumbles. Right. Right. Their abilities left the walls in ashes. Right. Their abilities left their walls in pieces. Right. Amen. 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 That's why it's very important that when it comes to doing the work for God, which a purpose Let's pop it up. The purpose and plan of God is our lesson this morning. Oh. Is not in there? I didn't have time. That's all right. The purpose and plan of God. Not my plan. Mm -hmm. Not my purpose. Right. So, how many in here, has anybody in here ever built a home? 
or at least know anything about it. Yeah, I know there's one that knows all about it. <laughs> you understand the value of having a good set of blueprints. Right. When I worked at Home Depot in the millwork department, I had I would have contractors come to me with the blueprint. And they would just give me one page. No. Now, a blueprint is made up of many pages. Right. Okay? The front, you have the complete, you know what the house is going to look like. Right. But then every page after that is subsequent. You have to do one page at a time. Right. Why? Because it's, they're drawn up in order. Right? 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 right. So I got the middle blueprint. The middle page. Why? Because that was what was pertinent to me. Windows and doors. Right? Now, I would design the windows and doors based upon what the contractor or the homeowner wanted. Right. All right? That was exterior doors, windows, interior doors, everything. Right. All right? Along that line. I didn't have any idea what the house looked like, so I'd have to tell them, you need to tell me a picture when it's done. Yeah, right, right. This looks like it'd be kind of a cool house, but you need to send me a picture. I want to see how the doors and windows look. Right, right. Yeah, right, right. Also, I'm just kind of nosy, too. No, I... When, when I go through the, I mean, we're talking garage doors, we're talking garage windows, we're talking interior doors, the, the six panel, whatever they wanted. And it was like, you know, had to know what I was doing. But it was, it was the middle page, I didn't get anything done. But blueprints are very good because they, 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 they get, tell the builder everything they need to know. If you want this finished product, mm -hmm. this is what you need to do underneath. Right. So use that. We're going to use that as a guideline this morning for our lesson. Keep that in mind that we're working off a blueprint. Right. Now a blueprint is something that usually only the contractor sees. When an electrician shows up, guess what? He gets the electrician page. Right. Right. When the plumber shows up, he gets the plumber page. Right? Mm -hmm. right? So, so the only way to live in a home that is drawn on the front page, you, you need to follow each page of the plans as they are written. Right. What would happen if an electrician decided I'm going to make some changes? What happens when someone wants to make changes? They have to change all the blueprints. Right. Yep. <laughs> oh, they accidentally put an outlet box on not this stud, but 16 and a half inches over on this other stud. Right. It's just a small thing. Uh -huh. mm -mm. And I think it would serve better if I would put it over here. Uh-uh. Yeah. Yeah, if that happens, then the finished product will not be what is or was expected. That's right. They, they, they now, you know... That they have certain regulations now according for outlets alone. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many lives in an older home where you can never find enough outlets? <laughs> yes. And they're never on a convenient wall. Always. <laughs> That's what keeps extension cord companies in business, folks. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> Every individual has a twofold purpose for 
for being given life. Number one, is to be in a right relationship with God and to worship Him. And number two, to help bring other people into a right relationship with God where they worship Him. What's the whole idea behind the blueprints? When we work outside of God's plan, and we work according to our own plan, there are alterations made. Why? Because we make them according to our abilities. When I was a younger, I, I got into I, I got in touch with my feminine side and I did some knitting. I started out with being able to do a long, long string. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One after the other. Just, I could knit that. That, that was easy. The, the yarn and hook thing. Just go through the loops and just keep going. You just make a string. That was easy. Then all of a sudden I got an idea, well, maybe I'm just gonna try it, I'll double it up. So I doubled it up. Hey, maybe I'll do another thing. So that longest string became a scarf. <laughs> so I said, you know what, I could do this, I could keep doing this and I could make other things. And I realized that my talent only goes as far as a scarf. <laughs> so everything I intended to try to make always ended up as a scarf. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make a Christmas gift or a present for somebody and I hope they like scarves. <laughs> that was supposed to be a, but it's now a scarf. <laughs> the scarf becomes a blanket. <laughs> and I could have kept going. I could have made a, hey, there's your quilt. <laughs> Ooh, make it sound like that was the intention all along, but it never was. How many times have we done started something with the best of intentions, but all of a sudden our ability says you can't do that. Right. And so we always alter the plan and say, you know what, this is what's in within my ability. This is all I'm going to get accomplished. Right. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what we're talking about here this morning is where we got to say, we got to reach beyond our ability, saying, you know what, this is as far as I can go. At some point, I got to allow God to take over and allow God to work His purpose through me so that we can see the actual plan done. Amen. Amen. My plan is not God's plan. Right. Amen. Well, I could have hints of good intentions. We live our lives off of good intentions. Mm -hmm. And we always work in God's plan somewhere within it, but yet it will never outreach our abilities. Right. Amen. Amen. God is an intentional God. Amen. Amen. Those guys who draw up the blueprints, that's what they do. That is their profession. That is their bread and butter. That is their skill. That is their job. Right. You do not question these guys because you want to know what? It's more than just drawing a bunch of lines on a piece of paper. Yeah. It's mathematics and measurements and, and equations that we don't ever see that go into this. I mean, it tells you everything. Nothing is performed by random chance of haphazardly. When we, when he created the world, he had a divine design in mind. Amen. Okay, before he ever spoke anything into existence, he knew the world that he was creating would be where you and I would reside. So, consider that, with that in mind, God created it on day three. He needed everything that was created on days one and two. Right. Okay? So when God created on day four, 
He needed one, two, three to have four. Right. And on day five, likewise, one, two, three, four. He didn't. What if he took the blackness of the earth and let there be man? There would have been space travel right there. We would have needed NASA. Hello? So everything was intentional and in order. Because that's how God operates. So why do we think that when we allow or turn our lives over to God and we start to work in his purpose, why do we think or have this fear that our calling and our work is going to be chaotic? We make it chaotic when we try to keep it within our own abilities. God does everything by order and design. And God has a plan and a design. And when we live our lives according to his purpose and his plan, there is order. It is only when we step out of his plan and his purpose that there is chaos and disorder. So why is it that we are so afraid? Because I'll tell you why it is. It's because we only know how to function in chaos and disorder. What if we didn't have to spend our time organizing our order in chaos? I don't know what that would be like. My life is one giant ball of chaos and disorder. I'll tell you why that is. You know why that is? Because you put your plan and your purpose ahead of God's plan and purpose. That's why you're constantly in chaos and disorder. What if a contractor show, shows up to a building site and says, okay, boys, we're just going to start building the walls. And they're going to say, well, where's the foundation? Well, we'll put those on the foundation later. Hey, roofers, let's, let's do the roof. There's no walls. Well, we're gonna put, we'll, put just, we'll just build it on the ground and then we'll put it on the... Later. You know, we have a tendency to do our things backwards. We always put the cart before the horse. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have great grand plans or grand ideas, but we never have the plan and how to get to the end result. Mm -hmm. Drive Sister Nora crazy because I don't like to get myself involved in the projects. First of all, I know myself, I, mm -hmm. I have a hard time finishing lengthy projects. Mm -hmm. But I also know sometimes what some projects entail mm -hmm. when all she knows is something's broke, then it's fixed. Mm -hmm. To go from broke to fix, there's a whole lot of trips back and forth to the hardware yeah. store. <laughs> And I learned that a very, very, very early part of my late my, my marriage that you don't send Sister Nora to the hardware store and try to describe to her what you're looking for. And I, even though you're 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 elbow deep in in the toilet muck, and you know you don't want to go out of the house because you smell like you've been 
working in the sewer because you probably have been. Right. Apostolic women and their hair causes a whole lot of problems. I thank God for long hair, but you want to know what? They, they, they are merciless to the drains. And I spend a lot of time in hair muck. I pulled out hair balls, you swear to God, it was an animal. How did this, this rat get down this drain and here you find out it's somebody's hair? That's accumulated. So what I do, I taught Amelia how to do it. It's her hair, her drain. And you want to know what's so funny about that? She's now more cautious. <laughs> so now, when someone else does the work, Brother Busher, they don't really care. Do they? I've dug in there. <laughs> Same. Your fingers didn't fall off, did they? But you swear to God, they would, didn't? All that and gross, especially after, especially after they found out that that liquid plumber doesn't work, and so it stops at the hairball and gels right there, and then you're pulling all gray, slimy, stinky. We're not hungry anymore. Lord forbid, if you're on your menu for lunch, was gray and slimy. If your, if your meal home was gray and slimy and a lot of hair in it, then you're probably not hungry. But there's a process to go from problem to fixed. And all of us are well aware that there are... So I'm the type of person that likes to think out the whole process. Why? Because I don't like to make... So many trips to the hardware store that I, I, I waste money and gas right. where I could have just hired someone to come and do it themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. See, man, if we were smart and we evaluated how much time we spent, and, and I would like to think, we think that it's our house, that our time is free, but if you would start to figure out your time spent, and the gas going back and forth and the buying of tools. But I use home projects in order to buy new tools. <laughs> Any smart man would. <laughs> oh, you got a project for me to do? Does it require a miter saw? <laughs> Or a, or a or a air gun or a nail gun? Yeah. No. <laughs> oh yeah. No. I, that means I get a compressor, I get air guns, I get I get I get I get nails, I get oh. Then I can use that compressor for many other things around the house. Then you have to have a workspace, which includes workbench and <laughs> it's just a downward spiral from there. It is. Table saws, yeah. wrenches, tile cutters. Uh, let's not forget the tile cutter, the wrenches, <laughs> screwdrivers, hammers. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I'm trying to get at is, by the time us men would figure this out, we'd realize it would be cheaper just to bring somebody in who already has that stuff and has the know-how. Let him worry about it, and we can go on our way and go do the things we want to do, like go fishing. <laughs> Seriously. Amen. And they'll get it done half the time. Because they don't have to walk from your sink to the truck to get everything they need. Where we would have to get in the car and drive to the hardware store. Anticipate what we might need. And then come back and realize we didn't get everything we did need. And what we did anticipate we didn't need. And what we did get was all the wrong size. 
So we have to go back again. <laughs> and again. And ask for help from the nice man that works in that department. <laughs> I love it when people come in and they say, I need to make this fit into this. <laughs> I love those kind of puzzles. I hate it looking at customers saying it just can't be done. I want to make this round peg go into this square hole. Uh-huh. It doesn't work. Why? That's the way we do things. Right, right. God's plan and purpose says you only go once. Right. You come to the altar once and I give it all. And I laid it all up for you. If you just follow my plan, step outside of your abilities and let my abilities take over, then guess what? We will eliminate the chaos. We will eliminate the confusion. We will eliminate all the hard work. And I will just make it easy. I'll even give you the power to do it. I'll give you the ability and the agility to do it. I'll give you the knowledge and the wisdom to do it. After the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, the right relationship with God was broken. We look at that and say, oh no. That's what happens when man steps outside of God's plan and purpose. And then we have to think about, you know what? Oh no, now God had to make a new plan. Folks, if you think that's the way God works, I was a swamp land in Louisiana, so you. That's not how God's plan works. Calvary was not his second plan. That was his plan from the beginning. He knew what he was doing before he even spoke the world into existence. He knew that there was going to be a tree. Not the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But he knew there was going to be a tree that was going to bear him and his death. He knew it before he even said one word. Oh. Correlation time. Mm -hmm. Knowledge of, tree of knowledge of good and evil. Yeah. Was symbolic of Calvary's cross. Right. Because those that fall under the redemption now come into the knowledge of good and evil. Amen. Up to that point, all they ever know is evil. That's right. Mm. Yes. Ooh. God's plan was from the beginning. Right. I'm going to put a cross in the middle of Garden of Eden. Yes. On one cross, man dies. On the other cross, man lives. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God's plan is perfect. And the perfection of God's plan is weaved throughout the whole Bible. Amen. God does not leave us with the feeling of conviction that can lead to condemnation. He offers a way to restore our relationship with him in his blueprint. He offers a plan of salvation. Amen. Amen. 2 Timothy 1, 8 and 9. We already read it. Paul declared to me that God has saved us. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our abilities, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Yes. Amen. Amen. In the beginning was the word. 
The word was with God and the word was God. The Greek word for word is logos. Now the primary meaning of this word is a thought or a plan. So if you read it, then in the beginning was the thought or plan. And the thought or plan was with God, and the thought or plan was God. Amen. You cannot separate God from his thoughts. That is why John 1 and 14 goes on to say, and the thought and plan was made flesh. Right. Amen. Think about that. <clears throat> and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. From the very beginning, God had a plan that would involve manifesting himself in flesh. To come as a savior who would offer the ultimate sacrifice for the sins of all people for all time. Amen. Without a need of salvation, there would be no need of a Savior. Right. Let's look at this uh, at a more practical way. If there was no lakes, there'd be no need for boats. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why Noah caught a lot of slack. There was no need for boats. They were land-loving people. So to that point, man didn't go on water. We find it hard to believe, don't we? Because we've been growing around, we've been growing up around lakes and boats our whole lives. Mm -hmm. Or we have boats that don't run. <laughs> been there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Being included. So let me point something out to you. If we take all the things we've heard so far, I want us to understand something. Us being here is not a mistake. Mm -hmm. Us being here is a part of the plan and purpose of God. You are a part of the plan and purpose of God. He took everything that he knows about you and he says, I can work with that. Right. If only they will let me work with it. Right. Amen. What separates us from the plan and purpose of God is not God, it is us. Right. We are the ones that move ourselves out of the purpose and plan of God. And we move ourselves into a whole lot of trouble, mess, and chaos. Right. I will tell you, a person that is living their lives in trouble and mess and chaos, I will tell you, the main reason is because you have moved yourself out of the purpose and plan of God, and you're trying to do the best you can within your own abilities, and you're making a mess of it. Right. You are not an accident. Right. You are by design. Yeah. Yeah. God had you in his plan, and his plan involved you. Yeah. Yeah. From the beginning, before you were even a thought on your parents' mind, before you were even a thought on your grandparents' mind, before you were even a thought on your great-grandparents' mind, before you were even a thought at all, God had you in his mind. Amen. Amen. He didn't just work you in. You were a part of it the whole time. Right. 
What you think was random wasn't random. Amen. It was by plan and design. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Why? Because God does everything by design. Amen. Now, being included in God's plan of salvation is the greatest blessing any of us could ever experience. Knowing God is no respecter of persons and that all have an opportunity to be saved shows us that God definitely is including all of humanity in his plan. But only being included is not all that God has in mind. Right. His plan involves us. It takes us from spectator and recipient to the level of being a participant and a giver. Right. Amen. 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 There is no room for spectators. Right. I will tell you what, when your walk becomes a spectator sport, you get bored by it. Right. Yeah. Amen. But when, oh, I found myself in joy. I can't stand to watch baseball. It's so slow. But make me a participant and I will play all day. Amen. Oh, folks, listen to me. When you get bored with churches because you've made yourself a spectator and you have not gotten involved. But once you get involved, you'll be willing to be involved all day long. Amen. Tennis is boring, but I'll play it all day long. Golf. <laughs> <laughs> but put 18 holes in front of me in, in the golf clubs and a cart <laughs> I will enjoy myself all day long if that means snorkeling lumberjacking <laughs> and, and lawn mowing and <laughs> And, and everything else is involved with going after one of my golf balls. <laughs> friend of mine and I went golfing. And we had this little young lady standing behind the desk. And, and we were standing there in front of her and we ordered a cart. And first thing my friend asked me, he says, um, is the cart full wheel drive? She looks at him, she goes, no. He says, but please tell me they're, they're, the chainsaw is included, right? She looks at him, she goes, no. And I look at him, I said, well, I'm, I guarantee you there's snorkeling and deep diving equipment on that thing. And she looks at him, no. And we're like, I guess we can't play here then. Because we spend all of our time in the woods and in the water. <laughs> she looks at us and we start laughing the poor girl, the poor girl had a drained look on her face like who are these people <laughs> can't stand to watch it but can play it all day long Folks, I know where we're at and where we are at in our spiritual walk with God solely based on how much we get involved, mm -hmm. how much time we spend our lives in chaos. Mm -hmm. I know, I know, I know exactly, let's fix it. But we don't want to, we don't want to do what it takes to fix it. Right. Why? That means that we have to get out of our own heads out of our own plans and out of our own desires and move ourselves into God's plan and God's desires. Right. Amen. Yes. Amen. The things that have got us there in the first place are the things we don't want to leave behind. Amen. 
Right. Also, when we become a participant, boredom is no longer a factor. But when we spend our whole lives as spectators, we get bored with church awfully fast. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Ephesians 2.10 He saved us for the purpose of using us for his glory. When we join with him in his plan, we are fulfilling his twofold purpose for our lives. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before us ordained. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So God had the work. Right. Mm -hmm. And then he saved you right amen to do the work right that needs to be done right right amen amen so we are his workmanship so he says okay i need somebody right that can do a b and c i need this done so I am going to bestow upon this man and this woman a workman for me. Right. And he designed it. Designed you. He designed me. He designed us into what he needs us to do in order to do the work that he preordained or that he determined before we were ever in existence that needed to be done. And just an accident. You're not an accident. Right. right. I'm outside God. The only way you're outside of God's plan is because you moved yourself outside of God's plan. Right. I don't know what God's will is for my life. Shut up and go find out. Right. Amen. Amen. Why? Because He designed you for work. Right. He designed you for a purpose and a reason. Yeah. Go to him and find out what it is. Amen. And get out of your own head and out of your own mind and out of your own thinking and start moving yourselves into the plan of God. Amen. Amen. Oh, for we are his workmanship. Amen. It doesn't say mistake. Right. It doesn't say whoops. Right. Doesn't say, oh no, there comes that child 30 years later. We didn't plan. Mind that you may not have planned, but that person was a work. Amen. We are his workmanship. Amen. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Yes. Amen. He designed us for work. He designed us to walk in them. Amen. I don't know about you. Second Corinthians three and five. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. But our worth, our sufficiency is of God. Amen. What am I trying to get you to understand? Within yourself, sorry, I'm going to burst your bubble, you are nobody. But when you allow yourself to move into the plan and purpose of God, mm -hmm. Amen. you now all of a sudden have worth. Amen. Amen. This world is full of people who think mm -hmm. that they've achieved. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, they've achieved this world's 
riches. But there's nowhere. I don't know of any situation where you could take any of it with you. And two years later, everybody will forget about you. Why? Because the living's got to move on. We can't live in that anymore. We gotta move on for our own sanity and our own sake. But God's plan doesn't stop. Oh, okay, that person's gone. I guess God, that plan, purpose is gone. No, no. God is perfect plan, which means there's someone waiting in the wings to take over. He wanted them to know that God's plan was bigger than them. That they should not think they could do it on their own. Remember, God's plan is bigger than us. Amen. You can't work a plan bigger than us within your own strength and ability. Amen. You need to rely on the strength and ability of God in order to get the work done. There is nowhere in Scripture that the plan of God is more concisely and clearly communicated as it is in this passage. He was telling them, since you have been saved according to my plan, now continue with my plan and go into the world and make disciples wherever you go. He told them in verse 20, he told them two things, and that's why I didn't want to end. I want to get to these. Two things. Number one, I have told you that what you need to know to fulfill my plan. And number two, I'm going to be with you overseeing my plan wherever you go. Amen. They could walk away from the encounter full of faith and confidence that God had a plan for them and that it would come to pass. Amen. 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 We need to get out of our own heads, folks. Amen. And get into the plan of God. Yes. And God will give you all you need yes. to be able to fulfill it. Amen. Let, me, let me point something out to you. Folks, we are not fulfilling our full potential. There's the potential we place upon ourselves. And then there's the potential God places on us which is higher than my potential, my set goal potential. Our, our, our goals and our potential we set for ourselves are so small compared to God and what he sees. Right. We are not fulfilling our full potential, folks. That's right. ah, so you don't understand. I'm in this mess of chaos. I'm, I'm, I'm sinking this quagmire. I'm... I'm because that's where you live. You don't live outside of the mess and the quagmire and the chaos and confusion. Why? Because that's where you function. But you really don't function. You live from moment to moment trying to get out. And God saying, hold on here. Why do you want to live down here when I have this for you up here that is free from chaos? It is above I liken it to an airplane. You can take off and it can be storming. Right. And dark clouds and 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 just rain like crazy. And 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 you're, you're thinking, oh my goodness, this is not gonna fare well. All of a sudden you get above the clouds and poof. Yep. Light. Uh-huh. Not a raindrop in sight. 
clear skies, sunlight coming in the window, and you're like, what in the world just happened? You left the chaos yep. behind. Amen. And you broke through yes. the trouble. Yes. And you're now clear sailing to where you want to go. I love flying west in the evening because you can watch the sun, sunset from above the clouds. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Same way with watching the sun rise, flying east in the morning. So gorgeous. You can see it. Free from obstruction. There's never any trees. There's never anything in the way. It's just, boom, in your face right there. Just gorgeous. There's no... I, uh, all of a sudden you come down out of the clouds after sailing for three hours in above clouds you come down and it's storming mm -hmm. it's like and you're like what in the world what happened <laughs> well you got below the the ceiling uh -huh. nobody down here knows what it's like up here right. Right. unless they were up there Believe it or not, if there's nobody in here who's ever been in an airplane, mm -hmm. oh my goodness. Just the thought of this multi-ton thing getting off the ground is amazing in itself. Yes. Right. But the majesty of God and the plan of God is so right. revealed mm -hmm. through the simple process. Mm -hmm. It's just breathtaking and staggering. Some people, they never leave the ground. Mm -hmm. And they take what, the, what, mother, what, what the, the weather guy throws at them. Mm -hmm. And they whine and complain about it. It's always either too hot or too cold. Mm -hmm. Too wet or too dry. Mm -hmm. Too snowy or too sunny. Mm -hmm. Too cloudy or... Why? Because we can never make up our minds. Right. I will tell you what they know. In God's plan and purpose, above the clouds, it's the same all the time. Mm -hmm. The weather doesn't change up there. Mm -hmm. It's sunny all the time. Uh -huh. Amen. <sighs> Amen. 